Oh, this beast of a car. It's giving me headaches. All started with some little vacuum leak back here, then some little hose broke, and then this big old thing here snapped off, and I glued it back together, and then it was running like shit. I think it's the mass airflow sensor, but I've done a bunch of stuff here. Check the timing belt. It's still in time. Um, pulled the plugs out. They look, you know, like they had a lot of rich fuel running on them, but now we're going to set up my super tool here, and we'll just uh, crank it and watch that all these spark. That'll kind of rule out the ignition control module. Okay, hit it. Well, verified a few things we know aren't wrong. I had all those spark plugs out. You saw there where I showed they are, were all sparking. So that tells me the ignition control module's probably not bad. Uh, we checked the compression. Compression looked good in all four cylinders. We, uh, I took a, like a 17 millimeter wrench and used it to push this the opposite direction to put more tension on the belt. Then I grabbed this with a, a big uh, crescent wrench and then I was able to turn the engine over pretty easily with the spark plugs removed. So I kind of got the mark down there close to where it should be to show you're top dead center. And then I used this method to roll it exactly top dead center. Then I popped these clips off, pulled this back, made sure the timing belt was still showing the notch lined up with that. The notch lined up with that little notch there. So every, everything looked good there. So that's cool. Uh, I've done different things like I've checked that vacuum brake assist cylinder seems to be working properly holding vacuum. I've disconnected a lot of these vacuum lines and went to the PCV valve, the manifold here, you know, just kind of plugged everything just to get that out of the circuit. That didn't change anything. So I'm starting to think we just had a random failure of that mass flow sensor. That's what I'm hoping. Got one on order, it comes in in a couple days. We'll see if that solves the problem. Otherwise, I'm at my wit's end here. Okay, I think we finally got this beast fix. Mass airflow sensor. Crazy, because we'd replaced one here a few months ago. But anyway, that one seemed weird from the beginning. This one worked great from the start. So, the freaking humidity is high today. I'm sweating like a pig. That's why the lens is uh, messed up. I can't get the dang air conditioner to work. I took it back apart and checked. I did have the wires on these switches. So I don't know what's wrong with it. That's, you know, another day. Anyway, it started. And it, uh, you know, revs up. It's not instantaneous. It makes a little clack, clack, clack when you first hit it. But, uh, you know. Okay, this code is in there, but I'm sure it was there from before I installed the new mass flow sensor, so we're going to clear that one. It says there's no pending codes. Alright, I'm just going to step through the codes here, and then we'll cut it down to a, a smaller data set. On this screen, let's see, mass airflow in pounds, okay. That bottom one there is important. I'm at 4,000 RPM right now. First one's, first one's up and down quite a bit. Bottom one is uh, pretty steady. 
All right, we're gonna take it for a little drive with this plugged in so we can kind of see what the mass airflow reading changes from. So here at idle, it is 0.403 pounds per minute, which I think is what Nick was reading the other day in pounds per minute as well. So let's just see what happens as we get up to speed. So we just pulled away from the driveway. I'm only going about uh, 15, 17 miles an hour. Stepping on it a little bit here. We'll wait until we get out on the road. Okay, I got a big truck coming out in front of me, so I better slow down. I'm heading up this hill. I'll go ahead and floor it for a little bit. Okay, I just drove up the curb. That was embarrassing. Coming to the corner here. He whips it. Whips it out onto the highway. And now we'll see if I can not go off the road again. So here is a uh, it's floored, coming up to 70 miles an hour, coming up to 80 miles an hour, 85, oh god, I just passed the highway patrol guy. Let's see what he's got going on. He, he is uh, putting the brakes on back there. But uh, I'm getting off into the running from the police right now. They don't want to mess with me because I'll just claim that I'm uh, was going to a rally or something. Okay, I'm not kidding you. I was going 85 miles an hour with a highway patrolman coming at me. And he did put on his brakes and slow down up there at the uh, one. So I'm parked in a parking lot right now, kind of hiding away. I'm going to sit here for a little bit. Okay, I think I've uh, hidden here, hidden here in the parking lot long enough, so... To make things worse, I actually don't have my wallet or driver's license with me right now, so... I'm feeling pretty lucky! I'll apologize in advance here, I'm just going to talk and carry on for a little bit. I know a lot of people don't like it when people just uh, blab on and on, you know, they want to see pictures of stuff being done. But uh, this is a video more about kind of a learning experience of sometimes, you know, I don't believe in coincidences. Usually it's something that you've done recently or something that someone's done recently to the car that's causing it to act funny. But in this case, it was a complete coincidence that this mass airflow sensor just decided to die while we were doing a couple other minor unrelated things to the car. So we chased some red herrings and got confused, but in the end, just wanted to share my experience. I've got another video out there showing replacing the mass airflow sensor in a 99 Volkswagen Passat. So this really isn't about how to change it. It's just another lesson in what symptoms you might see with a bad mass airflow sensor in this particular vehicle. We had changed the mass airflow sensor here, I don't know, six months ago with a high quality walker mass airflow sensor and uh, solved the problem. So I had seen how a car acted with a bad mass airflow sensor with the surging, the hunting, you could see the throttle body uh, hunting, moving at idle trying to maintain RPM. It would idle okay. You could sometimes, you know, gently work the foot pedal and get the RPMs to come up and you could get it to rev up to, you know, maybe 3,000, 4,000 RPMs and it would hold it there for a while, but then all of a sudden fall on its face. So you could sometimes get it up to speed and cruise maybe across town with it, but boy, if you had to stop at a stoplight to try and get up to speed again, it was a nightmare to try and get up to speed, you know, because coming out of idle, 
and trying to get up there it just was completely dead so I'd seen this before now what confused us here was we were just doing something similar car had been working fine for months my buddy drives it over parks it in my driveway we replace the blower fan switch got that all done while he was doing that I had the hood open and I was just kinda of looking around at stuff and I found this little vacuum leak a tiny little eighth inch hose just coming off of a check valve that I could hear it in there just vacuum leaking I would put my finger over it and it would stop the vacuum leak and the car would start to you know idle a little bit better and I thought well that shouldn't be that way and so I thought well you know I could plug it but you know who knows maybe it's there for a reason I don't know it's related to the vacuum assist booster thing on the power brakes I don't want to mess with it and then uh, closed the hood and all that kind of stuff and then when he was ready to leave went to start the car dang thing just running like crap I'm thinking what could it be I mean what could it be I didn't do anything I just you know touched this little vacuum leak so we lifted the hood we're looking for obvious stuff I show him all I did was touch right here well he reaches in there and touches around there and snaps this one big uh, vacuum check valve assembly snaps it and uh, then a huge vacuum leak occurs and thing starts running really rough and so we shut it off and in that case I went and got some epoxy glued that little vacuum check valve piece back together but uh, you know wasn't sure if maybe some check ball or something rolled out while it was open or what but you know everything appeared to be fine but the car continued to run really crappy we found the PCV valve pulled out of its spot thought well maybe that was it so put it back in car still running crappy acting exactly like it did months earlier before we put in the new mass airflow sensor so I'm thinking well you know can't be the mass airflow sensor I mean it was running great when he brought it over here all we did was the fan switch and you know touch this deal and yeah we broke this little check valve but ah, this can it be I mean but it has to be something that we did it can't just be that the mass air flow sensor decided to take its last breath in my driveway can it so that confused me so anyway chase some red herrings for a while with a new vacuum check valve assembly um, you know checked all kinds of stuff checked everything everything's fine timing spark everything's fine so I'm finally like you know what it's quacks like a duck walks like a duck got to be a duck it's got to be the mass airflow sensor so bought a new mass airflow sensor had it uh, delivered you know waited the three days put the thing in immediately ran better right off the bat I thought this is kind of strange because previously my last experience was we put in the new mass airflow sensor it went from uh, completely inoperable to running okay but it took a while to relearn. I think that first mass airflow sensor was poorly calibrated right off the bat and uh, so the engine computer kind of relearned poorly how to operate and then finally decided to take its last breath in my driveway. So anyway, um, sometimes coincidences do happen. Um, again, there was very similar stuff. It was surging so and so. I did have a friend come over and hook his meter up to the car and he pretty much noticed the same thing I did that the mass airflow sensor readings in this case were changing my previous experience was the mass airflow sensor reading was pretty much stuck and fixed at a certain value no matter where you were in RPMs or throttle position that was obviously bad I've whittled the uh, available choices down to some that I thought were the most important. So I'm going to go ahead now and start the car. And we'll monitor some of these. Yeah, just really died, so.
Okay, we got her to start and run there. As you can see, the uh, manifold or the mass airflow is stuck right around 11. Now we're idling, still at 11. Now I'll try and take it up to like 3,000 RPM, hold it, it'll stay for a while, then it'll start sputtering and about die. So. Idle's good. Okay. This mass airflow sensor would vary between like two and five pounds per minute. But in reality, that should vary between somewhere around maybe 0 0.6 pounds per minute all the way up to maybe 18 at wide open full throttle 85 miles an hour so if you're not getting those the computer's getting bad information it's making poor decisions and it was running this car way too rich when I had my buddy come over with his fancy pants code reader analyzer machine again he came to the same conclusion that it was the likely the mass airflow sensor but he did one extra thing which was kind of a surprise to me he pulled the plug off the mass airflow sensor and we noticed immediately the car started to idle very smoothly when you looked at the throttle body you could see that the throttle plate was no longer slowly hunting and moving back and forth the engine wasn't doing its surging anymore at idle and actually the car started to drive pretty good. I was able to take it up to the gas station, fill it with gas, drive it around. With the mass airflow sensor disconnected, the car ran pretty good. I'm sure the fuel economy and some things like that were going to not be as good, but I was amazed that if you just completely disconnected it, the computer somehow ignored that information then and actually ran fairly well. So. Just a tidbit that you can try that.